Yesterday, I was served this ad from Polestar and thought, can I recreate this in Keyshot? Well, let's have a go. The first, a message from Moment. We've just launched our new automotive scene collection for Keyshot. This five scene set runs from studio shots to in action, giving you a diverse range of scenes to quickly drop your cars into. As with all Moment assets, they are mastered by me, and in particular, these scenes are a joy to render with. So if you're looking to up your automotive renders, head over to Moment via the link in the description. So we have our model already dressed. Can't remember where I got the Polestar from, but the materials are super basic. Basic paints, metals, plastics, anyone should be able to apply the materials like I have. I really haven't used anything special. Now I'm gonna approach this by lining up the camera first. I'm gonna get the perspective set. I'm gonna get my framing set. And then once I've got that, I can start bringing in geometry so that I can do the road, uh, sort of the pavement at the side of the road and the concrete wall from there. So let's bring it in as a backplate image. So I've already got it loaded up in my environment tab, already applied it as a backplate image, and I can overlay it. So it's low resolution, but here's what I'm going for in the background. So in the camera tab, I'm gonna make a new camera, I'll call it main, and then I can start to line it up. So that's all lined up now. I can save and lock my camera. And now we can focus on bringing in some geometry. So I'm just going to go edit, add geometry, add in a ground plane to start. The ground plane will be here. So if I double click, I can apply a diffuse material to it, jump straight into the geometry view. And then I can start to position this ground plane that we have here and scale it if I need to. But really, we're just going to move it over in this case and line it up to where it is on the floor there. I'm now just going to duplicate this, repeat the process until I've got that pavement and the wall. All right, so we have our three bits of geometry in place. Now I just need to group them so that I can scale them and move them all together. So select them all, add to group. I'm gonna call this group concrete and then again in the geometry view take that concrete view scale it all as one that's what's done for geometry next we're looking at materials so i've managed to find pretty good free materials for everything that we need ambient cg is my go-to place i managed to find this really good asphalt material this is 24a that i'm going to use for the road um, there are road textures on here with lines but i just want to use the asphalt that's right and then i'm going to add the lines later um, I did find some concrete paneling on Ambient CG, but none of it was a great match for what we're trying to achieve, which is this. So I actually went a little bit further. It was a really good polygon material, um, which is paid for. I wanted to avoid using that. And then on free 3D textures, I managed to find this paneled concrete material, um, which is completely free up to commercial uh, license. So I'm going to use this. If you haven't seen my video on PBR materials, go and watch that for how to apply them. I'm going to fast track this and come back when the materials are applied. Now I am going to customize these materials a little bit later to get the colors right. But before we do that, we're going to get the rest of the scene set up. So first up is lighting. Now going back to our reference image that we're going off today, you can see that we've got buildings in the reflection and we've got a nice kind of dusk sky. So I'm going to look for a HDRI um, that can achieve that. Now, Fortunately, in the Keyshot library, I managed to find this Avasys Industrial HDRI, which looks absolutely perfect. So I'm just going to click that onto the Keyshot scene. That is a pretty good match straight out of the gate. I'm now just going to go through with the size, the rotation, and the height and get this into position. If you haven't seen my HDRI video, it's the last tutorial I uploaded on YouTube. Give that a watch if you need to know how to use these a little bit more. Okay, I'm happy with the position of the HDRI, so I'm now going to go into the HDRI editor, select that background layer, and then I'm going to dial back the saturation a little bit, just to take the warmth out of the sun and a little bit of blue out of the sky. We're always going to edit this in Lightroom anyway at the end, so I can pump a little bit of color back into it at the end of the process. Working our way down the tabs, we now go to the lighting tab. Uh, we could go product or interior mode. I'm going to go interior mode, and then I'm going to crank the global illumination bounces and the ray bounces. I can see how that's going to look in product mode, uh, although it's almost exactly the same apart from some plastics. Interior works well here. Working our way down again, we'll go to the image tab, photographic mode, 
and then we can start to get the exposure and the contrast of this render right remember I'm, I'm not looking at the color of everything else i'm really just focusing on the car at the moment so i'm going to bring up my reference image going back to this image it's definitely less saturated than as so i'm going to drop the saturation on there and then i'm also going to introduce a little bit of bloom so intensity up to one radius up to 100 get my threshold for the front of the car just so that's blooming a little bit here and then drop the intensity so it's not so extreme so we're now at the point where we need to start customizing the materials so i'm going to jump straight into the material graph for the paneled wall and start adding in nodes to get this right so the first one i'm going to use is a color adjust and that's going to be to lower the contrast a little bit so that we don't get those harsh dark spots i can also use something like a color to number in this case uh, to raise the darkest level so that we don't get those really dark black seams I've just spotted that this metallic map is also really throwing things off. So I'm going to delete that out. If your nodes don't work for you, just take them out. It's up to you what you want to do with your material. I think that's looking pretty good for now. Let's move on to the road. So for the main section of the road, I really just needed to desaturate it quite a bit. It's a little bit green on the PBR texture. And then I've also increased the value in the color adjust. So it's a little bit brighter. I'm now going to unlink the pavement, creating a carbon copy of that that we can change. And then for the pavement, I'm just gonna bring that value up a little bit higher, maybe to three on the value. So you get that distinction and we have that color difference that we've got in the reference photo. We're looking pretty good. We can now move on to the paint on the road. Like I said, you could do this with a PBR texture. I'm just gonna use a mesh texture in Keyshot because it's gonna give me loads more control. So I'll do the road first. I'm gonna right click and add in a mesh texture. We want it to be white mesh on a black background. Our shape is going to be a rectangle. Or square, sorry. We can increase the scale of this mesh to see it. There's our mesh. And then I think we'll increase the pattern spacing quite a bit. And then we just need to unlink the shape width and height. You can see how you can start to get your lines. Now we're repeating over and over again. So in our case, we just need to clip vertically and horizontally. My mistake, we actually just wanted to clip horizontally because of course we want the line texture to keep patterning. I'm now almost there. So I've really just got to dial, up, dial this in. I'm just going to increase the uh, height of the shape. And there we go. So now we've got our white lines on a black background. So now we can right click, add in a new material. I'm just going to add in a paint. I'm going to make it really rough, like 0.8. I'm going to make it a pretty close to white paint and then use that paint as a label and then use that mesh as an opacity map for that paint. Now I could use some of the other nodes that I've got here. For example, I could have the roughness from my asphalt on there too. And then in our case, I'm going to lower the refractive index so that it should be a little bit more crisp white. It's looking pretty good. So I'm now going to repeat the process again for the lines on the pavement. Pavement lines are in. They're just not very visible. So in this case, I'm going to change the material. I'm going to go for something that's going to sit a little bit more flat, like a diffused material. And now our lines on the pavement are more visible. I might just drop that white a little bit. In the end, these are all going to be blurry anyway. So the detail on them really doesn't matter too much. It's really about just getting the colors right on these. It's starting to look really good with this render. Let's get some animation on here so we can get that little bit of motion blur to make the car look like it's moving on the road. So first up, we'll do the animation for the tires. Now I'll note at this point that I've already grouped the wheels into groups here. That's really important. In Keyshot, you can only animate one entity at a time. That could be one part or it could be a folder. So with each of these grouped, I can actually animate each one fully turning um, in place. So we'll start off with the back left wheel because that's one that's close to the camera. Right click, add animation, rotation. I'm going to start this at zero and go to one. The length of the animation doesn't really matter because we're not actually going to render this as a video. 
And then I'm going to look at how far in terms of degrees we need to rotate this to get our motion blur. I'm going to start with 360. See how that looks. And then under motion blur, I'm going to make sure that models, camera and environments are all enabled for good motion blur. Now, as you go through, you'll see the wheel rotating. And if I just hold it at frame, does that amount of motion blur look good? In our case, yes. If I wanted more motion blur for the wheel, like it's moving faster or a different shutter speed, then in the animation properties, I would simply use a higher value of rotation. But this looks pretty good for us. Now I just need to go to my scene tree, find that back left rotation. I'm going to right click and copy animation. And then I'm going to right click, go to add animation and do paste linked animation on each of the others. So that is going to paste a linked animation to these so that if I change one, it's going to change all of them. So if I want to change the rotation for one wheel, I've only got to change it once in my timeline here and it will change on all of them. You can now see that all of them are rotating perfectly around. So that's the wheel rotation done. Now we can move on to animating the rest of the geometry, which is going to be much easier. We've already got our concrete folder with all the geometry in there. Add animation, translation, and then in my properties tab, which is down here, I'll bring this out. In this case, we just need to translate it on the Z axis. So zero on the Y and in the Z axis, how far do we want to move it over this one second? Again, the higher you go with this value, the more motion blur you're going to get. So if I go with, let's say, one meter, 1,000, just scrub through the animation, you'll see it moving. And then are you getting the correct amount of motion blur applied? If you want to go higher, you go higher here. Now you could do the maths and actually work out how far the car would be moving if the wheels went round 360 degrees, but I really don't think we need to in this case. So about 2,000 mil, two meters for me, looks pretty good on the motion blur side of things. So with that final animation in place, that's our work done in Keyshot. I could carry on tweaking this until the cows come home, but I'm happy with what I see on here. I've got the raw image done, and now I can pick up, do the final edit over in Lightroom Classic. Okay, so I'm now over in Lightroom Classic. I've got our render loaded in, and I've also got the reference photo loaded in. So first thing I'll do is set that reference as the reference photo and put Lightroom into reference view so I can see them side by side. I'm now in develop mode. I'm just going to start attacking our render to try and match it to this. So the first thing I think I need to do is crank the contrast. Exposure looks about right. Um, the shadows need to come up. Blacks probably need to come up. And the highlights I'm going to tone down a little bit. In terms of color balance, I'm going to warm it up slightly. Maybe a little hint on the pink. And then in terms of the structure of this image, I'm going to crank the clarity. There's a lot of clarity on here, so I'm going to bring up that structure. Maybe a little bit more texture too. And then overall saturation, I'm going to take down. I can pump in a little bit more saturation on the color bands that I want after. But even now, we're looking much, much better. Working our way down in Lightroom, I can desaturate the red a little bit potentially. And push the hue. Lightly that way. Add a little bit of sharpening. See how we're looking up close. Looking pretty good. And then I don't think I need to use too much noise reduction. Probably don't. I had denoise on in Keyshot, so maybe just a slither of noise reduction down there. And then down at the bottom, I'm not going to use any grain for this image. Um, and I'm not going to use any vignetting as well. So at this point, we're a pretty close match. I want to use a little bit of masking now to combat this bright spot in the top left-hand corner. So masking, I'm going to opt for probably a radial gradient to draw out from the top like so. And this mask, I'm just going to slightly dip the highlights, I think. Let's see what that looks. So that's where it was before. That's where it is now. Maybe the whites as well. It's obviously always going to be brighter, but you just got to be a little bit careful on that. And then last of all, we have the blue of the car so this comes out a little bit of a cooler tone than what we've got in our image here so i am just going to add a new mask in i'm going to use a brush mask with quite a lot of feather a bit small on the size and i'm just going to start painting the car try not to go too far over everything else and then for this i can slightly take the color temperature a little bit cooler maybe a little bit more green in there is there 
maybe a little bit less on the saturation. That's looking pretty good. I'm just going to spend a little bit more time up close, get dialing in these settings, see what I can take it, and we'll see what comes out in the final edit. Okay, so with a little bit more editing, dialing in the settings, I've now got to this point. Let's blow this up, see how that looks full screen. I'm pretty happy with the outcome of that image. So I'm going to leave it there. I think we've got a pretty close match. And considering when I did the test of this run, it only took me about 25, 30 minutes to get to this point. Um, I'm fairly happy with the outcome. So hopefully you've learned something from this tutorial. Um, hopefully you can translate some of this into your own work. And again, going back to the sponsor spot at the start, if you're interested in investing in some automotive scenes, ready to render, mastered by me, then consider checking out our new automotive collection over at moment.co.uk. I'll leave the link down in the description. Thank you for joining and I'll see you in the next one.